Hey everyone, it's Emilio here. We're talking tech and in this video, fanless computers or fanless servers for a home lab. Which one would be best for you? Now I've got three. I've got this one. This looks like a big old heatsink, doesn't it? There's one, there's two, and there's three. These are the three fanless computers that we're gonna be talking about today. They all have their benefits. They all have their negatives. They're really cool. They're really tiny. They're not too expensive. And they may be the thing that you're looking for to get set up in your home environment, in a home lab, in just a home computer. You can set it up behind your TV, whatever it is. Three fanless computers, let's check them out. But before we do get into that, please do the subscription thing. Click on the button on the bell down below so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that we are releasing on this channel. Let's check them out. Before we start talking about each of them and going through the specifics and showing you each of them one by one and all of the little bits and pieces that are on the front, on the back, and even on the inside, what is this thing going to be used? for. I mean, whether you're thinking about getting one, maybe you wanting a fanless computer, before you even go there, put a plan together about what this thing is going to be used for. They're called use cases, right? It's a sort of a fancy term to say, well, what are you going to use this thing for? What is the, your use case for it? Are you going to be using it as a server at home? Are you going to be using it as a just a brand new Windows computer? Are you going to be maybe running some movies off it and then connecting it to the back of your TV? All three of them are going to have their own different purposes their own different use cases. They can all run server software, which is quite cool. So if you're wanting, you know, like me, I've got a home lab, I like tinkering with this sort of stuff. You can use them as a server. I mean, they're not server grade. They're not like these big old racks that you can find in a company. They're gonna be a little bit smaller. But the nice thing about them is that they're fanless. And hence the name of the title of this video. I mean, that's why you came, right? Is you want a computer that is grunty, that is powerful, and that is also silent. And these things, 100% percent silent, not like a 99% silent. They're 100% silent. They got no sound because they got no fan. So that's really cool. No fan at all. But on the flip side, because they've just got a big old heat sink, they can run a little bit hot from time to time if you're really pushing them. So just keep that in mind with whatever you're thinking about building onto these. And they also will come in different price points. Some are more expensive than others. Some come with a lot more features than others. Some let you install more operating systems than others. Some are easier to install operating systems than others. A few things to consider. All right, let's go through one at a time. And then at the very, very end, I'll let you know which one I think is the overall all-rounder and which one I think is the winner. Let's start with this thing called the Zimmer board. I mean, this thing is awesome. I mean, it's small, mighty. This is just a board. I mean, it looks like a big old heatsink, doesn't it? It's like the MacGyver computer that has everything that you need in it. And out of the box, it just is amazing. It's tiny, it's small, and there are ports galore. Now, as of right now, you can get this one in three different models, the 232, the 432, and the 832. And each single one of them comes with its own little benefits. Of course, the eight being the best one of them all. But what's awesome about this is the ability to have all of these ports on the outside. There's the ports for everything. So even the hard drive, there is no hard drive inside of it, you've actually got the SATA ports right on the outside of the unit. So you can buy your hard drives, whatever size you want, plug them right into the side. You've also got PCI Express ports on the side of the outside. Like it's weird, right? Because normally all of these things are inside of the computer, not on the Zimmer board. They're all on the outside. But then you've got ports galore and there are ports absolutely everywhere. You've got ports on the front, you've got ports at the back. You've got yourself a couple of dual ethernets. You've got your USBs. Now this little powerhouse comes in either a dual core or a quad core computer. 2.4 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz on the quad core. It comes with two, four or eight gig of DDR4 RAM. There is some onboard storage, but it's only 32 gigs. So you are probably gonna wanna use those external things to sort of boost the thing up all together. Gigabit LAN, 3.0 USBs, PCI Express, mini display ports. It comes with absolutely everything. Now, pre-installed, pre-installed. So out of the box, I got this with Casa OS, which is essentially a Linux operating system. And uh, you can use it if you want to, and it's pretty cool. It's a fully fledged operating system that uh, you can just access via a browser and you can install a whole bunch of apps and do all this really cool stuff. Or you can remove it all together and then go and install your own operating system, which is exactly what I did. Now I did get to install Windows onto it. I did get to install Linux onto it, but then I thought, hey, can I actually get VMware's ESXi running onto it? And I did. And 
VMware ESXi is the operating system for VMware that lets you do all this virtualization stuff. And it actually worked quite all right. Now, I wouldn't recommend this to be a VMware server necessarily. I probably wouldn't even say use this for Windows. I would install Linux onto it. And uh, I actually tinkered around with this thing called PFSense. And PFSense is totally awesome when it comes to really setting up and deploying your own firewall in your home, in your small business, whatever it is, running right on this Zimmer board. Now, the nice thing about this is that it's small, it's compact. And honestly, I think this thing just looks pretty flipping awesome. It looks nice. That's the Zimmer board. This next one is really, really unique. This one is the 8.6S. Uh, it's tiny. It packs a punch. It's not fanless though. I know, but I thought it was all that fanless. You know what I did? You know what I did? I actually turned the fan off. I, I actually managed to get into it and switch the fan off and it ran pretty good. Hey, it's up to you whether you want to do this. I am still going to put it in the category of fanless because I thought it worked quite well without it, but you may want to turn it on. But look, honestly, even while the thing was switched on, I couldn't even hear the thing. It was like, it was as if there was no fans anyway. But this thing is amazing. It's really a customizable unit. There's a whole bunch of things in this and it's extremely grunty and powerful and really, really customizable to what you need it to do. I mean, look at this thing. We've got USBs, you've got ethernets, I've got HDMI. How cool is this? I've got a little slot where I can stick in a micro SD card. I've got SFP modules, the little slots, the holes. So I can stick inside of the holes, the SFP modules, and I can get the benefits of fiber channel. I can get the benefits of faster ethernet. Now, I did have to tinker around with it quite a fair bit to get the thing working and working well, because I needed to do drivers for absolutely everything. It took a lot of time to get it working, but then once it was working, boy, this thing packed a punch. And the nice thing about the ethernet points is that were 2.5 gigabit ethernet, and those SFP modules, you could actually get a 10 gigabit ethernet running into them. They were 10 gig. How cool is this on this tiny, tiny thing? I mean, this is the sort of stuff that you would find on a enterprise grade server. Not here. This was on this little tiny thing. I mean, amazing. Now inside of the unit, I could actually get myself an M2 little uh, drive inside of it or storage, right? So I don't have to put this big old storage with its own little moving parts and stuff. I could stick one of these inside of it and I could get a whole bunch of storage, which is really cool. Now my one came with uh, 32 gig of RAM, which is really cool. Um, they do come in different uh, configurations as you need it. But ultimately I tried Linux and that worked, that worked okay. But then, you know what? Didn't do VMware. I did Proxmox and Proxmox being another sort of uh, virtualization platform. And you know what? That one worked the best. And I think that is what I would recommend if you're considering one of these ones. Let's now talk about the third one before we give you my results and which one I think is best. And this is by a company called Protect Lee. Hey, that's a cool name, I think. My one, the one that I've got is the four port vault. Now, if you go to their website, you'll see that there is a whole bunch of different options available to you. But the one that I got is the VP2420. And this one came with four. Yes, you heard that correctly. Four 2.5 gigabit ethernet points. Again, let me remind you, this is a computer. Like this is a desktop. This is not even a desktop computer. This is a mini computer. It's not even a server. And it came with four ethernet points. I mean, do you need four ethernet points on this mini computer? Sure. Why not? If you've got it, why not use it? Use it for redundancy. Use it for failover. Use it to get, you know, a whole bunch of more throughput through those ethernet points. How cool is that? This one is a quad core. I could burst it up to 2.6 gigahertz, 32 gig of RAM. I had inside of it a SSD SATA hard drive. Also came with a 16 gig EMMC on board, like there for some additional storage right over there. And amazing. I mean, again, this thing just looks so cool. I think this is probably the one that looks the best uh, personally. It's a nice square. It's got some weight to it. Out of the three, it was the heaviest one and it just felt solid. It felt good quality. It was really, really cool. Now, there's a whole range of ports. We've got display port for a screen. We've got HDMI for a screen. That's cool already. I love that. USBs, you've got a USB-C port, you've got a console port and a SIM port. A SIM port. That's cool. Hey, you can stick a SIM card in it. You could get some roaming coverage right in the unit itself. And this thing is just awesome. So anyway, what I did, I got VMware running. As I said, I actually got VMware version 
8, installed it onto a USB stick, did the whole thing. It picked up all the drivers right out of the box running ESXi and it's great. I've got to say, it is great. It is sneak peek, my favorite one out of the three. There is one more. I mean, how can you talk about fanless computers without talking about this little thing? This little, little gem. Do you know what this is? This is a Raspberry Pi. I mean, these things have been around for so long. They're every geek's little dream computer. It does so many things. It's small, it's cute. Look at this thing, it's delightful. You can stick it in so many places. You can install so many things onto it. Linux, you can use it for pen testing, for security. You can use it to open up your doors. You can sort of set your home automation on it. It's really cool. But hey, I needed to do a little bit of an honorable mention to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, you're not gonna get the grunt and the power as some of these other three, but this little thing is amazing. And I'm, I'm look, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm just gonna say it. Every single tech nerd needs to have a Raspberry Pi. I mean, it's like, it's a non-negotiable. If you have not bought yourself a Raspberry Pi, go get one. They're cheap. They're really cheap. Add it to your arsenal because they're amazing. Now, all three of them were great. And as I said at the start of the video, I'm using all three of them for all different purposes because they all have their own different purposes. But if I had to pick one of the three, I'm probably gonna go for the Protectly one. I think it just looks cool. I feel that it is sturdy. And I actually also felt it was the one that was running the coolest. Now, here's the thing is even the second one, which I know I talked about the fans and I unplugged them, but even with the fans on, I found that the Protectly was still cooler. Hey, and it was running a lot of grunt. I built a whole bunch of virtual machines onto it. It's running a full hypervisor and it's doing a pretty darn good job. Like I love this thing. Hey, that's the three. Let me know what you thought down below in the comments. Like this video if you liked it. And hey, we're on the YouTube machine. So would it be awesome if you did the subscription button as well. Click on the button on the bell. See you on the next video where we continue talking about all things tech.